morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Pastor Gary Whiteley, pastor here at Fredericton Word of Faith Family Church. And we just want to welcome you to uh, our Facebook teaching. We're teaching on the subject of do you know what time it is? And we're talking about the end times. We're talking about the coming of the Lord. And we're talking about the events that are happening uh, in the world all around us today. And so we've done a number of teaching. Perhaps you've been able to catch some of those. Our last teaching, we were talking about the person of the Antichrist. And this is an individual that uh, uh, will appear uh, before very long. And uh, that will be signal the start of the tribulation. But today I just wanted to take a little bit of time and talk to you about uh, the spirit of Antichrist. And so uh, that is here already. It tells us in uh, 1 John uh, chapter 2, it says, Little children, it is the last times, as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know it is the last time. So, so uh, John is talking about uh, the, the spirit of Antichrist, the individual Antichrist uh, hadn't manifested yet, but the spirit of Antichrist was there, and so it just simply the word Antichrist uh, speaks volumes. So whatever God is, the 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 devil is against it. If God is love, uh, the devil is hate. If God is good, the devil is bad. If God is health and healing, the the devil is sickness and disease. And so it's anti. Everything that is pro-God, he is against. And so, again, this kind of helps us to understand the hour that we're living in and what we're seeing. It goes on to say in First John 4, beloved, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see whether they are of God. Because many false prophets, teachers, speakers, are gone out into the world. And so in these last days, Satan's job is to deceive and to confuse and to upset uh, people, especially Christians. Uh, the, the world's already in his pocket, but Christians are the one he is primarily out to deceive and to trick and to get them to uh, not believe the word of God, not believe it's the end times, not believe that Jesus is coming back. And uh, so it goes on and on. It says, uh, hereby we know the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard it should come, and even now already it's in the world. See, they were teaching this back uh, in John's day. They were making the, the church aware of the, of the spirit of Antichrist. Well, in the 2,000 years that have come be, be, from the, this writing to today, uh, the, the church has pretty much lost the, the interest or the understanding of the Antichrist and the spirit of the Antichrist. But if you have a newspaper, if you watch the news, if you're uh, aware of what is going on in the world, believe me, the, anti, the spirit of Antichrist is very, very active in the world today and so it again like we said it is against everything that god is for we, we are living in a day and age it's, it's hard to believe but people uh really are trying to get god out of everything i i've heard people say we need to get god out of the schools and they basically have they've gotten prayer out which is praying to god talking to god starting their day out you know talking to the lord you know pledge of allegiance and different things like that they they have taken these things out why because uh, uh one atheist one un, a person who said i don't believe in god you know and maybe there was 500 kids that do believe in god and yet one person said well we don't want to offend and so that's the spirit of Antichrist, to get all these things out of the school, get them out of education, get God out of the universities, get God out of, out of science, get God out of medicine, get God out of the government, get God out of everything you can. And that's where we're at today. We see this, it's everywhere. 
uh, people are against the things of God uh, primarily. And so we've, we've been warned, these, these are the end times. When you see these things happening, you know that, that the Lord is coming soon. And so it tells us back here in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, it gives us uh, uh, an indication of the end times. Now this, verse 1, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, or the end of the age, this is going to happen, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. A uh, hundred years ago, many, 150 years ago, so many of the churches and denominations were on fire for God. They had strong beliefs. They believed the Word of God. They believed uh, uh, that uh, the Word of God was true. But uh, in those intervening years, many of those churches have now fallen away. They've changed their, their doctrinal statements. They've changed their statement of belief to correspond to what's going on today, the lifestyles, the morality of the world. And so we, they say, well, we have to change because the world has changed and we want to, we want to be able to fit in with the world. And so it just simply tells us, this is what the Word of God says, that now the Spirit speaks expressly in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Not everybody is going to depart from the faith. It says, giving heed to seducing spirits. See, there are spirits out there, which is the spirit of Antichrist, which is out to seduce or to make people fall asleep or make people think, well, this really isn't important. Uh, and maybe we don't really need all this God kind of stuff. And doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils, uh, really, we, we see this uh, very much, you know, doctrines of devils is not in the government. It's in, it's in churches and denominations. And whole denominations have swung over to doctrines of devils. They're saying, well, certain lifestyles are all right with God. God loves everybody. And that's true. God loves everybody. But he is also a judge. The, the Bible says in the, uh, the Gospels that Jesus said, the things that man highly considers and thinks are, are great can be an abomination unto God. And so we're living in these days, we're living in this hour where people are trying to change the Word of God. They're trying to make it less and less, even get God out of everything. And that is the spirit of Antichrist. And so we're, if we are told exclusively, expressly. Now the spirit speaks expressly. It means it's time to wake up, take notice of what is happening all around you. We have people that, that I'm aware of that do not want to read the newspapers anymore. They do not want to watch the news. Why? Because all they see is, is the evil and the bad that's going on. Well, we're told that these things are going to be happening. And we don't want to be like the ostrich that sticks its head in the sand and just ignores all these things. We need to be awake and we need to be aware of what's going on. And so, uh, again, we see these things. And again, it tells us in Second Timothy, uh, Timothy, First Timothy, Second Timothy, has a number of scriptures that are devoted to the end times. In chapter 3, verse 1, Know this, that in the last times, perilous times shall come. Dangerous times shall come. We're living in an age where now it seems like it's acceptable to riot. It's acceptable to burn and to loot uh, and to ravage and to pillage. In fact, now I've even read where some professors are saying that this is normal. You should let them do this. Uh, it's okay. We're now beginning to see that there's teachings that are, people are beginning to say, well, you know, pedophiles, there's, pedophiles are people. Of course they are. But what they're, you know, you know, what they have that desire for is there's probably nothing wrong with that. And so, again, these are things that are being forced upon the church and Christians and some churches are saying, well, okay, well, if you say this, science says this and so on and so forth, then we're going to have to change. Bible doesn't change. God does not change. He is ever the same. It tells us in Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, but if our gospel, if our good news, we have good news. You say, well, it doesn't sound like very good news to, to me, Pastor Biden. No, the good news is you, you and I, if you stick with God, God will stick with you. We'll come through this thing. And we're going to see the glory of God. But it says, if our good news be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Now it goes on to explain, but the, but in whom the God of this world, so the God, the Bible tells us there is something called the God of this world. 
And at this moment, it is not the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? It is Satan. He is the God of this world. Remember back in Luke chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 4, uh, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glories, past, present, future. Showed him all the glories of these things and said, these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. So Satan, one, he said, I have these things. Well, where did he get these things? When Adam committed treason. When Adam sinned, he turned all these things over to Satan. Satan has been the god of this world for 6,000 years. And his, 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 he only has just a little bit more time. And then it's all going to change and all going to end. But it goes on, it says, in whom the God of this world, remember we're back to our scripture now, if the God of this world, uh, he has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And so God's word is light, Satan is darkness. He blinds the mind. He blinds the understanding. People believe, I don't really need God. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to tithe. I don't need to be faithful. I don't need to pray. These are all anti-Christ. This is the spirit of anti-Christ. It is here. It's in the world. It's all around us. But the good news is, you and I, we do not have to uh, fall for this. He's, he might be the God of this world, but he's not my God. My God is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, he said, you might be in the world, but you're not of the world. And so uh, I might be in the world, but I'm not of, of, of the world. I'm of the kingdom of God. It says when you get born again, we are translated out of the kingdom of darkness. That's the kingdom of Satan, the, the Antichrist, that Antichrist spirit. We are translated out. We are instantly brought into the kingdom of God. And that's the good news. I'm going to stay there, aren't you? God is good. And these last days are unfolding and, and with prophecies that are unprecedented, never seen anything like this. All I can tell you is the Lord is coming soon. You need to be ready. There is a revival that is happening in the earth. And it, while all these things are getting dark, uh, the thing, the Bible tells us God is still going to move. He's going to move powerfully. He's going to do everything he can to reach this lost and dying world. He's going to try to show everybody that he is alive and well and everybody needs a Savior. If you're not ready to meet him, you know, your, your, your time could come today, it could come tomorrow. If you're not ready to meet him, you need to get ready. Say, how do I do that? You can simply ask him into your heart. So if you're willing to pray this way, maybe you're a backslider. Maybe you don't go to church. Maybe you used to. And you just you got sidelined. Maybe you got seduced. Maybe you got deceived. Maybe you got to thinking, well, you know, I don't need these things. You do need these things. You need God more than you've ever needed God. You need to be in, in church where they teach these things more than ever. The Bible says in Hebrews 10.25, not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together so much the more as you see that day approaching. You need to be in church. You need to be in a, in a church where they honor the Word of God, honor the Holy Spirit, and they stand up against the devil. So if you'll pray with me, I believe God will touch you right where you're at. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I receive him as my Lord and Savior. I believe he died for my sins. He washed my sins away. I repent of my sins. And now I believe that he is my Lord and he is my Savior. And Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost too, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. You know, he'll do that for you. And if you've fallen away and you haven't been serving him, you haven't been living for him, and you're not in church, a lot of people think, well, I can be just as good of a Christian at home. Why did he say not to forsake the assembling of yourself together? See, that's that spirit of Antichrist that makes you believe, I don't need to be there. You know, I'm not important. You know, well, they hurt my feelings. Big deal. You know, I tell people, well, I got hurt in church. I said, did you ever go to the dentist? Did he hurt you? <laughs> did he have a little bit of pain? Well, you went back, didn't you? You need to get back into church. You need to start serving God. This is the end times. You need to be found living and serving God. We need you. We need you in the body of Christ. You need to fulfill the calling on your life. Well, anyway, I'm Pastor Gary Bightley. I uh, thank you so much for listening. God bless. Share this, this teaching with your friends on Facebook. You know, they need to hear it too. 
God bless, and we'll see you with another teaching in a few more days. God bless. Goodbye.